If bigger is better, then the 2014 Toyota Highlander certainly improves over previous versions. Let's get in this third generation Toyota Highlander and check the tech. Now this is the 2014 Toyota Highlander. It's grown about a half a foot from its first generation in 2000. This is actually the third generation vehicle, just new for 2014. Toyota has added uh, a lot of its truck-like styling features for this 2014 model. Uh, in front here, we have these really prominent headlights and we have this grill with these really strong louvers along here. These are things you'll also see on cars like the Toyota 4Runner, which we just reviewed recently, which is more of an aggressive truck-like thing. This is still more of a crossover, but we do have these contours along the side that lead up, and we've got this uh, two-tone roof rail here, the silver roof rail. I don't particularly like it. And we come out to the rear, and we have these really bulbous tail lights. These sort of stick out of the back here. This is sort of another Toyota signature design feature. In the cabin here, Toyota put a lot of convenience features in the Highlander. First of all, we got this uh, console here, and if I pop open these uh, slots for it here, it uh, goes way down. I can put laptops in here, or basketballs, or who knows what else. Then I got the shifter up front here for the six-speed automatic transmission. That's one choice. There's no other transmission you can get. We got a reverse camera on the screen here with some uh, distance lines, but no uh, trajectory. If I spin the wheel, nothing happens on there. And I can throw it over to Sport here, uh, holds the lower gears a little more, and it's also got a manual shift mode, which doesn't make a lot of difference in a car like this. Up in front of here, I've got my all-wheel drive controls. I've got a button that says Snow, and that'll actually detune some of the torque at the wheels. You're less likely to put a lot of twist at the wheels and uh, slip in the snow. There's a button that says DAC, that's a downhill assist control. Oh, that's a, it's a very slow maneuver, uh, only for really slippery hills. And then also we have a button that shows the wheels, it's got a little X in the middle, that's your diff lock. The diff lock will actually ensure that you have power at all wheels. Use that in a situation that if you're in ice or stuck in some mud puddle or something like that and wheels are spinning, so whichever one can get grip will hopefully pull you out of that situation. But now let's go up to the head unit here. This is a uh, completely new head unit uh, for Toyota. So we have a uh, row of buttons across each side here. These are soft touch buttons actually. We've got a button that says home. We go here and we get a nice screen that shows our map the current weather, and whatever audio we've got playing. Uh, we go to our apps uh, button here. Now this is kind of a neat thing. This is what cars are going towards. Uh, Chevy MyLink has this too. All the buttons are kind of the same shape for navigation, audio, phone, messages, eco. We'll show you how the cars perform. And we've got a traffic button. And Toyota can keep on adding apps to this car with this type of paradigm. So it's, it's just like a smartphone, really. It's, and there's even the ability to change these apps so you can uh, move buttons up to the front that you'll use the most. Uh, there's a reorder button here and you can kind of move things around on here. So that, that's really useful. If we go to navigation, here's something we haven't seen in Toyota vehicles before. These maps are running off of an SD card and we get a perspective view and that shows that sort of 3D look, bird's eye view of the terrain. Toyota has not had this before so it's nice to see they've finally gotten around to putting this in one of their cars. Some people like this perspective more than others. This head unit comes equipped with Toyota's Entune system, that's their app integration system. So I've got my phone sitting on here, running the Entune app, connected to the car through Bluetooth for hands-free calling and music streaming. It also works as a data connection for the apps that uh, Toyota includes on here. So if I want to find a destination, how may I help you? Find a business. Say the business you want to find. CBS Interactive. Say the list number of the one you want or say none of these. And once it brings it up on the map, then I can hit go to and that'll program it as a destination for uh, navigation. It's a lot of steps to go through that. I, I kind of wish they would uh, make that a little more convenient, take out some of those steps, but it is online search and uh, I need to see that in cars these days. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Uh, other apps in here we have with Entune. We can uh, find those uh, by just scrolling over to this screen here. We've got movietickets.com, Open Table for making uh, restaurant reservations, uh, Pandora and iHeartRadio for online music, and we even have uh, Facebook Places, Yelp, uh, sports stocks, uh, and a fuel guide that'll actually show you uh, local uh, fuel prices. That's pretty convenient if you want to find your uh, lowest uh, price per gallon to, to feed this, uh, this monster. Of course, we have the usual uh, audio sources. We've got Bluetooth streaming audio. We've got a USB port that does uh, iOS integration. 
HD radio and satellite radio, and all this plays through a JBL uh, sound system in this limited trim uh, Highlander. 14 speakers are these uh, green edge speakers. That's their label for uh, a type of speaker that uses less energy but still is supposed to sound as good. The clarity is good. I mean, hearing a lot of detail in the music, and that's really nice, uh, but there's a big problem with this system. Uh, anytime the music gets a little bassy, the speakers really rattle and distort. It's, it's really bad. Music lovers are not going to like this car. I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on with it, but uh, uh, that's, that's one of the real uh, problems with this car. And it's, it's definitely a fault of the engineering that uh, you get this panel rattle and distortion from the system. Now this Highlander being pretty much a family van has a third row seating. So with this middle row, I can pull some latches on the side here and pull this uh, middle row forward. Gives me access to the third row. It's not bad access. Third row is pretty small, but you can fit some kids back there. I can also pull this down and make this uh, middle row go pretty flat. Definitely not flush with the floor, but if I pull the third row down too, then I get a decent amount of cargo area back here. Maybe enough to get a couch from Ikea or something. Chugging away under the hood here, we have a 3.5 liter V6 engine. Uh, Toyota's had this engine around for about 10 years, 270 horsepower, 248 pound-feet of torque. Those aren't great numbers by today's standards with an engine of this size. Uh, fuel economy comes in at 18 miles per gallon city, 24 miles per gallon highway. You can also get a 2.7 liter four-cylinder engine in this car, but that only gains you about one mile per gallon fuel economy, so it's not a great bargain, really. Now, you can see with this engine, it's mounted pretty low, a lot of space down here. This transverse mount is pretty common in a uh, front-wheel drive vehicle. Of course, this has the all-wheel drive option, which means that Toyota put a drive shaft down to the rear wheels. The more compelling engine option for this car is the hybrid drivetrain. That gets up to 280 horsepower net. You also get 28 miles per gallon fuel economy. In this sort of standard 3.5 uh, V6 configuration, I've been seeing real world under 20 miles per gallon, and that's not great as an average. First thing I notice about the Highlander is the suspension. It, it has a very comfortable ride, a very springy, compliant suspension. Since it has three rows of seating, you put 1,200 pounds of humanity in here, it also has to ride comfortable for that, too. It's, you know, it's not a great handling suspension. It'll, it'll do all right, but if you take a corner a little too fast, like I've done a couple of times, uh, you'll feel it lean quite a bit. It won't feel all that stable. I really like how the steering is also tuned. Uh, this is, of course, electronic assisted power steering, as pretty much every new car is. And one thing I do find uh, with this engine, though, it doesn't have a lot of power. You can mash down the accelerator to pass somebody. It's just not super fast. I've also noticed uh, with the uh, transmission here, six-speed automatic, under power, if you're climbing a hill or something like that, in normal drive mode, it tends to hunt. You can find, feel it trying to shift up and then shift down and shifting up again. Put it in sport mode though, climbing some hills, and, and that seems to really solve the problem. That just ensures it keeps the power up, keeps in some lower gears. Base price for the 2014 Toyota Highlander in LE trim is $30,470. We have the limited trim platinum edition that includes the driver technology package and panoramic sunroof with all-wheel drive that goes for $44,845. There are a lot of things I like about this 2014 Toyota Highlander. There's a lot of good improvements in the technology. I certainly like the head unit, the Entune connected feature. JBL speakers weren't my favorite. Uh, the driver assistance features are pretty nice. What I really don't like, though, is Toyota's engine options. This 3.5 liter V6 is just not much power and terrible fuel economy. The hybrid in this trim goes for 51,000, but that's probably the one I'd want. 